Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming. Um, it's the end of the con, so I understand that there's attrition. So You're in the session creating nimble Drupal systems for government, transforming Minnesota's Department of Health in six months. These are the other sessions that are going on right now. If you are not supposed to be here, I won't feel offended if you leave. So there are other things going on. And I wanted to start with an agenda. So quick introduction to me and who I am. I want to tell you why I think we're here and what I'll be talking about. I'm going to try to define what I think Nimble Drupal systems are. And then I want to talk about the six months of transformation that um, the Department of Health that the state of Minnesota underwent um, that we were instrumental in, I think. Um, and I kind of want to talk about what I think the secret sauce was to that and the idea that you could be doing this as well. Um, and one of my final slides is asking for help. It's often really hard to do and there's all these perceived reasons why I wouldn't ask for help, so I wanted to go through those. And then I'll leave it open for Q&A at the end. So, hi. My name is Ivan Stegic. I live in Minneapolis. I recently got LASIK, so this, um, this presentation has me still wearing glasses. Um, I have a background in physics and psychology, and I spent a fair amount of time in R&D at Honeywell and animation. I grew up in South Africa, so I was able to immigrate to the United States and was lucky enough to work at Honeywell, and always grateful for that. I've been tinkering with Drupal since 2007. Um, I've always been involved in software. Software has always been a thing that is kind of required when you're doing physics in grad school, um, and I fell in love with the web a long time ago, and then when I exited from corporate life, I kind of burned out, and then sort of started a company by mistake, because I kind of like the web. Um, and now I serve as CEO of 10.7. So 10.7, we are a fully remote, values-driven, web design and Drupal development agency headquartered in Minneapolis, Minnesota. We have 14 employees. Most of us are in the Twin Cities region, but we do have uh, employees in the Pacific Northwest, here in DC, and also in Michigan. And our mission is to make things that matter. What does that mean? It means a bunch of different things, but for the clients we work with, they're very specific about what their mission is, and so we try to um, Remember that in all the work we do. Second Harvest Heartland is a nonprofit. Their mission is to no one should go hung no one should go hungry. Sage Glass is interested in smarter, greener construction, inclusive, powerful engagement with history through the Minnesota Historical Society, and a number of other organizations that we are lucky to work with. Our Family Wizard, Animal Humane Society, Ending Wrongful Convictions with the Innocence Project, promoting environmental stewardship with Three Rivers Park District. These are the things that we try to remember every day in every line of code we write, in every interface we design. And what is this particular story about? Come on in. I mean, no pressure, but it's okay. Um, well, this is a story of how we helped a closely knit team inside a state government department transform their existing Drupal site and the things connected to it. And really the words you kind of want to look at are, we helped a team inside government transform their Drupal site. And better yet, we helped government transform their Drupal systems. I'll get to defining what that is in just a bit. And why was this particular department at the state of Minnesota important to us? Well, their mission is to protect, maintain, and improve the health of all Minnesotans. And that's kind of a noble cause. Um, and as a constituent, important to me as well. But what does transform really mean? What does it mean to you? What did it mean to the Department of Health? 
Did it mean faster to load? Did it mean easier to navigate? Easier to update? More secure? Better SEO? Faster to deploy? Nicer to look at? Accessible? Or something else completely? I want to just take a step back and think about what transformation means and what I'm going to use, how I'm going to define it in this talk. So if you think about improvement, improvement is a continuum and it always involves some sort of conscious iteration on where you are and where you want to be. You're never going to be improved. You will have improved a bit, but there's always going to be something else that you can do to get even better. And when I think about transformation, I think about the sum of all the improvements that we can do in many different areas to a particular project that we're working on. So that's what transformation means to me. So the second part of the title of this talk, I think we have kind of figured out here, defined. Let's talk about what nimble Drupal systems are. Yeah, what is that? Let's define things. Okay, so nimble. Here's the dictionary definition. What I want to focus on is quick and light in action. So something that isn't heavy, that doesn't take long, that's fast, maybe. Here's the word agile there, probably ignore that. And what is a system? A set of related things that we perceive as a whole. So nimble Drupal systems are quick, light, Drupal-related things that all work together as a whole. These could be any number of things that interact with your Drupal site. So it could be the YAML files, it could be the theme files, it could be the module files. It could also be the taxonomy on your site. It could be how the content types are configured. It could be the code base that's deployed at the host. It could be how easy the local environment is to set up for your developer. Everything revolves, everything that touches your Drupal site is in my opinion a Drupal system. And the idea here is to have them be as fast and quick and light as possible. So, six months of transformation. What was the secret sauce in those six months? I want to go back to how it all started. So we have an MSA with the state of Minnesota, which means that any department, any um, team at the state can go to this list of people that are a list of companies that are on the MSA and they can select them and they can work with them. So we were lucky enough, they reached out to us, they said, we could really use some Drupal help. We don't really know what, we know we want to be better, we just launched the site, can you help us? And of course this is music to every agency owner's ears, right? And they approach you and they want your help. The sell is really easy at that point. So the first step for them was asking. The second step for us is to always lead with empathy. And this is the secret sauce, in my opinion. You have to have empathy for all points of the system, for the client, for the uh, hardships that they may be going through. If you can lead with empathy, you can pretty much do anything. So what do those six months look like? Ah, the first month, kicked it off, we got started, we hit the ground running. It's not what happened. <laughs> it's not what, it, it never happens that way. What happened was all the legal stuff, right? Contract and the statement of work. <laughs> you have to get all of that stuff out of the way. And guaranteed it always takes longer than you expect. They are itching to go, they want to get started, we want to get started, you have to remember to be mindful. And if you're going into this kind of uh, statement of work, you should plan for it. There's always going to be this uh, extra time at the beginning. What else did we do in the first month? Well, we spent an awful lot of time getting access to all the right systems. VPNs, multi-factor, Oh no, you need one of those secure ID RSA things? Yeah, we'll ship that to you. Oh, we're using Teams. Okay, let's get that VPN taken care of. <laughs> Finally, after the first month, we were able to have a kickoff. The thing to remember here is that empathy thing again. Like, 
Everybody should be contributing to this. Yes, they want to get started. Just remember, it's going to take longer. And be patient. This was their first Drupal site. They'd never built a Drupal site in their lives before. In fact, it took them almost three years to launch the site. Because the site before that was a Lucy site, which is like this... I still don't quite understand what it is, but it's like this Java container that can run Cold Fusion. And before that, they were a Cold Fusion site that literally ran Cold Fusion on their servers. And so this team of, I think, two maintained these sites, designed and redesigned the site, figured out Drupal, Drupal 9. In fact, I think it was Drupal 8 first that they converted and upgraded to Drupal 9. Had to figure out Twig, YAML, after coming from Lucy. And then they had to migrate all of that into one basic content type from this giant Lucy deployment. So the second month, we spent listening, learning, and discovering all of this. We do a lot of listening in that second month. They did walkthroughs of the things that they were concerned about, the things that they had built. They discovered they didn't things they didn't know. We did as well. The value here is be a team. Do the work together and you'll go further. Then we did some audits. We did three audits. Technical, a user experience audit, an accessibility audit. And of course, the second month, we still had access issues. And just another reminder, don't get frustrated. Be patient. Lead with empathy. There are always going to be those issues. And once we had been through the audits, at the end of that second month, we came back with some re recommendations. We had reports. We came up with priorities as a team. And then we had a roadmap. And we decided to iterate on the things we could do, remembering that they also had other things that they were responsible for. These are not... Uh, state employees whose only responsibility is the website. They have more than just the website. They have other apps that they're responsible for. The Drupal thing that they're doing, it's maybe 5 or 10% of the time that they spend, plus they're learning it. And so getting these clear recommendations and ideas were very welcome. So for the remaining four months, we slowly improved many little things. We tried to use empathy in every line of code, in every meeting, in every interaction we had, remembering where they were coming from. You want to be inclusive at all stages. So what does that look like? Well, we had regular check-ins with them. Don't miss them. Record them if you can. Use the tools that work for everyone. This generates the least amount of friction. Yes, we're an agency that uses Slack and Gmail. Yes, that's our preferred mode of operation. They're a Teams organization. They require VPN. That's where they interact. It makes no sense for us to continue to enforce Slack for them as well. Meet them where they are. Keep good notes in all of these check-ins, and most importantly, make them easily accessible to everyone. I kind of wish we had content model documentation and blueprint and all of that stuff in place, but unfortunately we didn't. Maybe next year. They, um, they were struggling with how to collaborate with more than one developer because all of their systems are hosted at AWS and they manage all of their systems. So they have their own workflows, their own standards, their own security requirements. And this is true for all of their apps. So it doesn't make sense for them to host just their website elsewhere. They want to continue to leverage what they have at AWS. And that's OK. Um, they have strict security requirements. They want to continue to meet those. And so it kind of forces best practices from a DevOps perspective. So we had to uh, consult and help them manage their DevOps operation and improve it. 
uh, as much as we could. And we also had to be cognizant of the ease and speed of actually getting a local environment set up and actually being able to push to a staging environment and doing more than one branch and one feature worth of work at the same time. And how do you get that to production when there is a specific bureaucratic process that you have to go through that all apps have to meet? So we kind of made in the middle and we had easy deployments to staging. And when we finally had a release, they had a process that would take that code to live. And these are all still Drupal systems, like I said earlier. That developer that's pulling on that GitLab repo needs to be able to set up that environment locally. What are they using for local containers? What's the easiest way to get a Drupal system up locally? Those are all part of the Drupal system ecosystem. So what did the technical um, audit reveal and what do those recommendations look like? Well, we updated their build pipeline and that was about a month long process. Um, there were a fair amount of security requirements and it kind of alluded to the fact that we would come up with a release that we had in staging and that would get pushed to production. They had this Bitnami image that made sense at the time, but that brought in many things that they didn't really need. Um, so we changed those, introduced more performant containers. Um, like I mentioned, local developer tooling is important, so we wanted to be able to scale their Drupal infrastructure at AWS while making it easy for local develop for developers to use the system locally. They had all of these different languages that were enabled that were causing performance issues. A bunch of scripts that came through from the Cold Fusion site generally did a deep clean in their technical implementation. And then they had this major file migration that they had done from Cold Fusion to Lucy to Drupal. And so we brought that into Drupal as well and made them actual objects and um, file members of, of the system, right? Not just files on a server somewhere. And documentation is critical. Write about everything you do. It's a way of being inclusive. It's a way of reminding your future self. Um, and we also, as part of the technical implementation, fixed urgent security risks that they had maybe missed, that we had seen, that we've seen in other sites as well. Put it all together, you have quick light systems working together to allow Drupal to shine. But it was more than just code that we worked on. We did have a UX systems implementation. We changed things like making search elements sticky, creating custom blocks to standardize call to actions globally. So when you have a cold fusion site and you migrate it into a Drupal site, and you put all of the things into one main body field in one basic content type, there really isn't a good way to change a call to action. On all pages or a subset of pages, you kind of have to go through each page individually and make those changes. We did simple things like add a block that you can add and drop on many different pages and change the CTA in one place. We streamlined their accordion usage. We did basic things like align font usage across the sites and brands. We also reviewed and improved their text hierarchy and clarity. So remembering that H1 and H2 and H3 are important things, especially for accessibility, for screen readers, we were able to help them out implement those things. All these little improvements on this continuum coming together to make a transformation for the whole site. And then we looked at their content moderation strategy, um, which is fundamentally a human problem, not a technical problem. And if it's a human problem, it really requires a human solution. And unfortunately, that's not always the way that things are approached. Um, so we built the Drupal system to solve their human problem, as opposed to changing and fixing their problem so that it would work with the Drupal module that they were using. And we think that's made a, a difference to the way that they work. We also had workshops. We had a tag strategy workshop. They had an inventory of tags in their hierarchy of upwards of 5,000, I think, just many thousands. It was hard. Um, 
and don't forget, like, this came from cold fusion, right? Like, this is just how it was. We were able to help them reduce that to less than 100. We optimized their tags, went to a categorization of primary and secondary, um, and we moderated the access. Previously, everyone had the ability to create a tag. Kind of a reason why you get up to thousands of tags, right? We changed that. We, we implemented some permissions. That definitely helped. And then we helped them move away from a single basic content type um, that required manual updates across the board, right? So we would do a block where there was a call to action on a group of pages. Um, we created a news content type and were able to migrate all of the news items out of the basic content type. I mean, simple things like that. Then we focused on accessibility as well. We did an audit of the production site. And we thought about not just the constituents and the users that are on the anonymous side, but also the administrative users. I mean, you want to look at this holistically. We categorized each issue into critical and non-critical uh, things to fix. And then we did very basic tweaks to the settings in Drupal that they just weren't aware of. Um, things like requiring alt tags. Um, and that sort of thing. We use that tool um, that someone else, I don't know how to say it, but someone else referred to it as DQ. I've been saying DEQ. Is it DQ? D-E-Q-U-E. That's the tool we used. Um, it was very helpful in the uh, accessibility part of the work we did. So transformation was a multifaceted approach to improving as many Drupal systems as possible at every layer of the site. Asking for help. That's often the hardest thing to do. I think I'm required to have an animated <laughs> gift. <laughs> should I dox you? <laughs> we have a doxy. I have a half doxy, half We should talk later. <laughs> So asking for help is hard. It's hard because, wow, it didn't even occur to me. I'm stuck in this little bubble of my own team. Like, rely on the community. Ask the community. The more eyes we have on things, the better this thing is and the better it can become. It's hard to ask for help because you might be embarrassed to show your code. Don't be. We've all been there. It's okay. The community and agencies are actually happy to help. It's just hard to ask for help. Yeah, it's hard. I have nothing else to say. Can I even afford asking for help? Yeah, you probably can, especially if it's just a small audit, and you can go away and implement the things that we would tell you to help that you need help with. I know. It's so bad. We just need a new site. That's why I can't ask for help. You probably don't. Honestly, like. The Department of Health did not need a new Drupal site. They just needed help optimizing what they had. Um, there's likely lots you can do without having to start from scratch. And then my favorite one is uh, this one. Bureaucracy, RFP, competitive bid. I'm required to go through this thing. Uh, you might not be. There's always a way to figure it out. There are MSAs and there are contracts with organizations like Kerasoft that you already have a contract with that you might not know about where you could write a statement of work and we could get started next month. It's, um, <clears throat> RFPs are sometimes necessary, but also sometimes people think they're necessary and they're not. And so ask yourself about that as well. And that's it. Thank you. Um, I want to say thank you to everyone attending, but also to the volunteers that make this con happen. It wouldn't happen without all of you, so thank you to you. And then thank you to the Drupal community at large. None of this would be possible without like thousands of people that are involved, and I'm very thankful to be a part of it. And if you would like to send me a note, there's my info. And questions, if there are any. You had mentioned during the outset that you weave in the client's mission 
into everything that you do, design through launch. Can you give an example of that? Like how your team like looks to the mission of the organization and brings that down to the project level, in addition to just having really good empathy and climate report and all that. Or is there an example? Um, if you remember the bolded um, phrases that I had, be mindful, um, be inclusive, be honest, those are all our values. Okay. And so we don't, we, we remember and live the values that we have and we try to transpose them and transfer them over to the client and try to look for that. Okay. Um, and just remembering the mission as a whole that the organization has is easier if we know that it's connected to ours. Got it. And you it's know, like it's like a leaky bucket. Yeah, yeah. You you can't you can't fill it and then set it off. It's going to empty. So you have to keep filling it. You have to keep talking about it. You have to keep reminding people why you're doing things. Yeah. And how big was your team that was working on that project? Uh, it was a combination of four or five people at different stages. So the first few stages were um, a DevOps person, a project manager, um, a QA person, and then later on we involved a developer, um, and a UX person, and they kind of came in and out as the needs changed. That's cool having QA on the front. Yeah. Yeah, Maybe it helps with the, the end. Yeah. yeah, our our uh, QA engineer is also responsible for our accessibility, so she does all of the DQ analysis, and um, it kind of works nicely with the UX part as well. Okay. So you said two people on their team, and they're using this. Uh, I'm not familiar with what they're using. Did you have to convince them to use Drupal, or did they come to you already knowing the want it? They came to us with an existing site that they had built in Drupal themselves. They built it themselves. They built it, themselves. it was the first thing that they ever did in Drupal. Um, and they knew that they didn't know everything. So they had the self-awareness to know, this is the first time we're doing it. We're going to do our best. We launched it. So what appealed to them about Drupal or, you know, to dive in like that? Um, I think it, Drupal was used at other departments at the state of Minnesota, so it was um, a, no, a somewhat known entity. Um, the other systems that they have at the state of Minnesota are proprietary and they're also old, and so they've been looking for things to switch to. And so I think the Department of Health, um, because they've been managing their own infrastructure and their own apps, were more likely to pick something that was open source that they could manage, that they could go towards. Thank so it was really their IT department that made that decision. Do you see decision. an opportunity now to take over the whole state? <laughs> yeah, I always see that opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> and any other state that might be here, or federal government, or local. Yes. Thank you. Yes. So what does MSA stand for? Master Services Agreement. I'm sorry, I should have said that. Yeah. You had a line that was interesting, code with empathy. Do you have an example of like what that translates to? Is it a winky face in there? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think it boils down to seeing code that belongs to someone else that you could have very easily written years ago or months ago. And instead of thinking, gosh, that was dumb. How stupid is that person? Thinking, oh, wow, like, I could have very easily written that. I should tell that person and sort of lean into the vulnerability of actually saying that. Like, I think that's code with empathy. Like, that's a human writing that other piece of code. It's not someone who's, like, they're trying their best. Was the decision by the Minnesota developers to essentially kind of pick everything into a basic page, more or less, one that that's all they knew how to do, or because their content was so bad, that was kind of the only option to migrate it over? I think it was a combination of things. Yeah. It was the only option, real, really, because they only had single pages from Cold Fusion. Yeah. They didn't really know any better, um, but they also didn't have time, okay. because they needed to get off of this Cold Fusion 
Java thing, um, and and it's the Department of Health, and the pandemic hit, so like. You don't really have a whole lot of luxury to like, oh yeah, let's split all these basic pages into separate content types and do that. That's kind of a combination of things. They're still using Cold Fusion in 2020. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> there are some departments using Dreamweaver, believe it or not, still. So, yeah. Well, we use it for just as an editor. We don't use it to. Upload the site, download the site, all that stuff. But there's some that do, and and that's and that's okay. Like, yeah. that's an opportunity for us to help. Well, if there's nothing else, thanks for coming. Thank you. Alex.